In this video series, I want to take videos made by Flat Earthers and show that not only do their videos not prove a lack of curvature, on the contrary, the videos actually prove curvature and the videos actually prove that the Flat Earth is impossible. In this video, Anthony Riley is trying to say that this landmass over here should not be visible, it should be behind the curve. So if we zoom in, we can see that this landmass over here is the Isle of Man. This is the Blackpool Tower. And from where this picture was taken, 90 miles away, this hill over here should not be seen according to Anthony Riley. But on the contrary, not only does this picture not prove a lack of curvature, it actually proves curvature. It actually proves that the flat Earth is impossible. Now the picture was taken from Winter Hill Bolton, which is over here to the Isle of Man, which is over here. Now you'll notice this is about 90 miles. So we'll pop in the distance in miles is 90 miles. The viewer height, as I'll show later, is 1279 feet, or the metric 389, 390 meters high. Now, how much should be hidden? About 1422 feet, or in metric, about 433 meters. Refracted hidden, 317 meters. So even if we just use the normal hidden is uh, 433 meters, we're going to have to find out how tall that mountain is. And let's see if the mountain is taller than the mount that is hidden. Now, one of the best ways to prove that this picture actually proves curvature is have a look at this. We can draw a straight line from the top of this tower to, to the top of this peak over here. Now we can see it looks like the tip of the tower is actually taller than the top of this mountain. Now what we have to figure out is what is this mountain and how tall is it? First of all we can see over here that this mountain has this radio mast and this radio mast and we can actually figure out that this mountain is Mount Snaefell which is the tallest mountain in the Isle of Man and it has these towers on it. Now the locations of the peaks, we're going to show that the red peak is to Mount Snaefell. And I've also put in another line to the second tower on Mount Snaefell. So let's zoom in. And here we have Mount Snaefell. Here we can see the building. Here we can see the tower and its shadow. Here we can see the other tower and its shadow. We actually, actually can see over here train tracks. So here we have the left tower, here we have the right tower. This is Mount Snaefell. And this green line is the other peak. Now how tall is this uh, peak over here? According to Google Earth, elevation of, over here is 611, 612 meters high. That's 603. So this peak over here is about 611, 612 meters high. Now how tall is, how high is the cameraman? Based on my, cal based on my calculations, the cameraman is at this point over here is 390 meters high. Now if we go to, as you can see that these lines intersect Blackpool Tower exactly where we expected. Now the red line is to the tower on Mount Snaefell, this line is to the second tower on Mount Snaefell, and the green line is to the peak. Now this white line goes right near Blackpool Tower over this white picture here and you can see that in the picture. This red line goes right to the left of this building here and you can see in the picture that the red line from the cameraman to Mount Snaefell is right to the left of this building. And there's another feature in the in the picture is this radio tower. So, and there is Blackpool Tower, 
So let's zoom in here. And we can line the picture over these lines here. And as you can see, we can line all the lines up perfectly from here. So here the red line goes to this tower. This line goes to this tower here. This green line goes over this peak over here. And this white line goes right to the right of the tower over this white building here, as I showed before. And this radio tower is this radio tower here, right opposite its line of sight. So this confirms that I have the correct line of sights, correct position of the camera. And as you can see, the photo lines up perfectly over these peaks that we lined up. The other thing you should notice is that here's the horizon on the photo. Here's the, and here's the coastline on the, on the Google Earth. Here's the horizon on the photo. As you can see, about 60% of the island is missing. This is where the coastline should be if you could actually see it. So Google Earth is showing that um, about 60% of the island is missing. Now one of the things flat earthers never do is let's see if we can get this to work on a flat earth. Let's see what happens if we plot all these peaks into a flat earth. Here we have Winter Hill Bolton. Here we have the main Snapel Isle of Man plotted in. And then we have the Blackpool Tower. Now plotted in Mount Snapel 611 meters. Winter Hill Bolton 390 meters. A Blackpool Tower is about 550 feet from the bottom of from sea level and 168 meters. So that's counting the tower plus the sea level. So about 550 feet, 168 meters. Now, how did I calculate the horizontal axis? The way we calculated that is um, it's 90 miles to Mount Snaefell. It's 25 miles to to Blackpool Tower. So if you do 90.8 divided by 25.75, it gives 3.52. So Mount Snaefell is three and a half times further away than Blackpool Tower from Winter Hill. And if you do 30 centimeters divided by 3.52, you get 8.5 centimeters. So that's why Blackpool Tower is over here at 8.5 centimeters. So this is at zero centimeters. At 30 centimeters is Mount Snaefell. And um, everything on the horizontal scale is to scale. The vertical scale is exaggerated, but as you'll see, it makes a difference if we exaggerate it or not. And the reason why it's exaggerated is because if we don't exaggerate it, the, these peaks will be quite small to see. They'll only be a couple of um, pixels high. So if we actually had both of these scales, horizontal and vertical to scale, this will be only a couple of Pixels high, very difficult to see what's going on. So we exaggerate the vertical scale in order to see what's going on. So Winter Hill, 390 meters. Blackpool Tower, 168 meters. Now, if we draw a line from Winter Hill to Mount Snowfall, as you can see, Blackpool Tower doesn't come anywhere near this line. Something's very wrong because in our picture, Blackpool Tower is at the same height as Mount Snaefall. In fact, we can actually stack three Blackpool Towers on top of each other in order to get the line of sight from Winter Hill to cross over the Blackpool Tower and, and, and be at the similar height of Mount Snaefall. So it's almost three towers tall. Now, if we decrease the vertical scale in order to bring it more to more in line with reality it's still exaggerated but we still get the same result still you can count three blackpool towers almost in order to be on the same line as mount snaefall isle of man now if the flat earth model is correct this is what we should actually see we should see one two three towers tall and then we should have Mount Snaefall at a similar height as three towers higher than Blackpool Tower. So if the world was flat, this is where the Mount Snaefall would be relative to Blackpool Tower. Mount Snaefall will be this high 
three towers taller than Blackpool Tower, as you can see in this diagram. Three towers taller than Blackpool Tower, that's where Mount Snaefell would be on the image. The fact that Mount Snaefell is not three towers taller, the fact that Mount Snaefell is on a similar height as Blackpool Tower, proves that the flat earth is incorrect. The flat earth model is incorrect. And the only model that can work and that can explain what's going on is the globe model. Now let's see this on a globe model. So we'll first start off with the exaggerated vertical ones and an exaggerated curve and let's see if it can work. And if we draw in, we actually see that we put Winter Hill in the exact same position, Blackpool Tower is on the same position and Mount Snaefell is on the same position and we can get a straight line that goes that crosses Blackpool Tower and the peak of Mount Snaefall. And not only that, we can also add in a red line indicating where the horizon should be, which the horizon is about halfway between Mount Winter Hill and Mount Snaefall, just as what the curve calculators predict. And the curve calculator predicts about 60% of Mount Snaefall will be hidden. Now let's reduce the size of the vertical scale in order to bring it closer to reality. Now this is still exaggerated as I explained we, if we did it to scale it will be only a couple of pixels tall but just to show that it still works on a smaller scale uh, but let's have a look. So we see on a flat scale we have three Blackpool Towers to get it in line. Now on a flat earth we can make it work. We have Winter Hill, Blackpool Tower, Mount Snowfall, draw a straight line across and you can see the, the line cuts, cuts across Blackpool Tower and hits Mount Snowfall. And again, we can draw in where the horizon will be, again, about halfway between Winter Hill and Mount Snowfall. That's where the horizon is, and anything below the horizon is hidden. So this section over here is hidden. About 60% of Mount Snowfall is hidden, just as we see in the image. So if we go back to the curve calculator, we can see the mount that should be hidden is about 433 meters without refraction, with refraction 317 meters. As we know, um, Mount Snaefell is 611 meters high, so around 400 meters should be hidden, which is around 60%, which is exactly what we see in the photo and exactly what we calculate. In conclusion, this is a clear indication that this picture shows curvature. If it wasn't showing curvature, this is where the peak of Mount Snaefell should be on a flat earth. Finally, those who haven't seen my other videos, Flat Earth Debunked, Sunrise and Sunset Direction Part 2, and this one, Flat Earth Debunked, Sunrise and Sunset Direction from the Southern Hemisphere, you should definitely check them out, as they definitely prove that the flat earth model is impossible.